What drew you to working with the theme of these ancient uh, burial sites in Ireland or Kalini and that they're for people who are considered unfit for a consecrated ground. Can you explain a little bit about them and, and what your interest is? My interest began in, in Kilini when I read an article by Anne Enright. It was called Antigone in Galway, it was a couple of years ago, and it sparked my imagination. There were a few things that she said in that article that really caught my interest and it, it made me realise that I was one of many people who was just vaguely conscious of these, these burial sites. Um, uh, but she mentioned that not only unbaptized babies would be buried there, uh, they were considered unfit for consecrated ground, so um, the Catholic Church had deemed this. And so if a baby was stillborn or died shortly after birth and hadn't been baptized, it would be taken to this uh, unconsecrated graveyard. Um, the way it was done was in a, a very um, cruel way, I would say. The mother often didn't get to know where her child had been buried. She was expected not to grieve either because it hadn't been, it hadn't, uh, been blessed yet by the church. And um, so uh, the, the thing that really got my interest was when Anne Enright talked about how it was not only these unbaptized babies, but a lot of other members of society that existed on the periphery, they would often find themselves being buried there too, like uh, people who had committed suicide, um, uh, people who had been found washed ashore, uh, just you know, unknown strangers. Um, various people would be would be buried here that. Didn't, weren't seen fit to, to um, be part of society. And uh, so I started to take a, a map and I did some research and I found this excellent um, sort of archeological website that had a lot of database on the location of a lot of these um, burial sites. And I literally took that and headed out in my car and traveled around um, a lot around the West of Ireland and the Midlands as well and a few of the places and, and sought them out. And the more I, time I spent uh, seeking them out, the more it started to come alive for me as a, as a, as a subject, as a kind of uh, area of, of real fascination and it became richer and richer as well. The, the sites themselves are very charged, uh, very um, tragic but also very beautiful, so there's this real dichotomy. And so what I decided to do then was that I wanted to examine them, find some way to, to really draw attention to them as well. And so I would take samples and I would bring them back to my studio and I would study them and spend an awful lot of time looking at them and spend a lot of time drawing them. And they, they're very much, you know, what I saw is what, you, what I draw you know, what I, what I drew, and, um, and it's about not leaving anything out, really. It's about paying absolute attention to every detail. And I guess it's, it's to pay back some, some of that attention that they have been denied. You know, the, the, the people buried there are unnamed. They're, they're denied um, a decent burial. They're denied a headstone. They're, they're, there are stones to mark where they're buried but there is no, no other marker and there's, there's no way of identifying the people that are there and even you know, what age, what gender, what their story is. Um, so it is really about, yeah, giving some of that attention back to them, um, allowing uh, myself as well to contemplate this, you know, this, this phenomenon. And whenever I, you know, I spend the time on a drawing like this, I am, you know, it's hours, and there's a lot of space for contemplation. And the the series of, of works are called the the Anatomy of Chaos. Um, it it came from my my attempt at drawing this very organic, very chaotic mass of dirt and grass, and and 
and I found my own sort of uh, eye to hand communication was, I was losing grasp of it, you know, because it was so complex. And, and I began to think about how, you know, how chaos can be used as a strategy. Um, confusion, uh, dissonance, um, how this is used as a, as a, a power tool, if you like. Um, and the Catholic Church would have imposed these what I consider to be insane laws, you know, that, that a baby that hasn't been baptized can't be, be given a proper burial. Um, and the, you know, this was happening for hundreds of years and the country, Ireland is, is full of them, is, is absolutely peppered with these graves. Um, and I think that when you, when you create this dissonance in a person, you know, on the one hand, of course, it's, it's apparent, it's, the instinct is to hold this, this and, and take care of it, but they, they're forced to cast it out in the, in the night and, um, and, and give it no proper space and no, no identity and deny it all of this. And, and, then, and then this kind of theology that, that they're in limbo, you know, that that's where they are and uh, there's no rest, you know, there's no rest for the parents, there's no rest for the, the women, the mothers, and, and then also there's relatives, you know, the, the other kinds of people that would have been buried there too, you know, they, they're, they're all denied this, this um, dignity, I guess. And so um, my way of working is, is about paying attention, it's about giving that back, you know, returning it to the people. Yeah. Once you finish studying the, the, the clods of earth and the plants, you also have quite a specific, is it a ritual maybe, of, of returning them again? It's kind of a form of giving dignity back. Yeah, I, I'm not religious at all, but I feel it quite important. You know, when I, the, one of the first sods that I had, um, or the first, I guess, I was faced with this moment once I was finished, I thought, I don't, I don't want to just discard it. It's, it. That feels like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm done with that. I can get rid of it now. It's almost like a form of exploitation then, and, and that's the last thing I wanted. So I decided, yeah, I'll, I'll take it back and put it roughly where I'd, I had taken it from. And um, it's, the, it's a show of respect, I guess. You know, it's the, the least I can do because I've, I've taken it away and I'm putting it back. Um, yeah, it's a show of respect. And the works themselves are a form of remembrance of that unknown person. Yeah, I, um, absolutely. I would, when I'm drawing the grass, when I'm drawing the, the roots, I see hair, I see veins, I see, I see the people that, that fed that land, and um, not in a morbid way. I just, I just feel like that, that's, and not in a real way. It's just, it's in my imagination, and. Um, there's something, yeah, it is, it's about honouring that, you know, and, and really they are the forgotten in, of Ireland and this kind of this suppressed uh, history, um, you know, Irish society hasn't really faced up to f that past and it has fed into other um, problems that have, you know, have, have happened since. And I think it's time that, you know, we, we dealt with it, you know, it's, it's um, part of the history, it's part of this legacy of the, the Catholic um, hold that it's had over, you know, the church's hold over Ireland and, um, yeah, it's time to talk about it, I think. So you're actually here as part of a full women's show called Protest and Remembrance. So is there, I mean, obviously there's a remembrance element. Is there also a quiet protest element to it? Absolutely. Um, I think it's, uh, I, have, I have a certain amount of rage, you know, that I carry in, inside me when I, uh, when I go and visit these places and they're so lonely, they're so, you know, set so far away from anyone. And, and it's this willful desire to forget these people. You know, it's absolutely designed to forget them. And 
uh, the organic nature of how they're buried, you know, it just speeds it up. It speeds up that melting into the ground and, and so that they're forgotten about then, you know, we don't want to deal with that. And I mean, it's a very, it's a very difficult subject to work with because it's sensitive and there are still people who remember, you know, there are still people, um, they say up to the 80s, it was, you know, there were burials taking place still. And um, so how do you talk about something that's, you know, people that are voiceless, nameless, and, and sites that are almost invisible. So, um, yeah. But the more I look at them, the more I find them, the louder they get. You know? And I see the connections. I see how this is connecting up with the mother and baby homes. Um, you, I don't know if you've heard about the tomb scandal. They found, uh, they found a mass grave of, of babies or young and young children uh, at a mother and baby home that was where they kept young women who had fallen pregnant out of wedlock and their sort of, pun I guess, punishment or atonement was to, to remain in these homes for an uh, indefinite amount of time. And the, the children that were born sometimes or quite often died and, and they were discarded in a septic tank. And so that's the next, you know, this is like the precursor to that. Um, yeah, I see connections and I, I think that it's, it's because these things aren't, um, dealt with properly and faced and, you know, have to take, take responsibility for this, you know. <laughs>